Welcome to video number 19, Electronics and Wiring. In this video, we are going to cover all of the electronics and wiring in one video, and it is going to take us from the power supply, through assembling the ramps, to the mechanical end stops, the heat bed, the hot end, all the motors, connecting the power supply, and finally the extra fan that we're going to wire up for the ramps board. Step 1 is going to be making a power cord for our power supply. Basically all we're going to do is we're going to take our power cord, which is something that would be normally used for a desktop computer, and we're going to chop off the computer end, and then we're going to split the three wires inside of the cable, and we're going to run those wires into our power supply. The color scheme for these three wires going into the power supply is obviously very important, so remember to keep them in the right order. It's going to be green is our ground, white is our neutral, and black is our live. And that is exactly how you should screw them into the terminals. So in step two now, I'm going to go ahead and do the full ramps assembly, which is going to include the ramps board, the mega board, and then all four step kick drivers and their jumpers. The jumpers being the small pieces right there. Now in the video you're going to see me putting three jumpers per step kick and there's two pins for each jumper and you'll have a spot to put those and that's right underneath where the step kick drivers are going to go. And make sure when you actually go to put the step kick onto the board that the little silver circle there at the top, that's our POTS calibration, it needs to be pointing towards the top. Or it needs to be pointing opposite of where the blue and green screw terminals are. It needs to be like that for all of them. So go ahead and put all your jumpers on the board and put all your step kicks in place. At least for E0, which was the first one I put on, and now for X, Y, and Z. Now once we have all the step kicks in place, go ahead and line up your ramps board on top of your mega board and make sure your pins are completely lined up with the connectors on the underside and firmly push it into place. But do make sure that all your pins are lined up because you can easily damage these. So make sure everything's lined up and then push it all the way down so you have a secure connection. Now after that I'm going to go ahead and put a little thermal paste on to the X and Y step kicks. Now you don't have to do this right now, but I just went ahead and did it for the sake of it, but I'm putting thermal paste on there so I can apply my heat sinks. Now I'm only doing it for the X and Y because the movement for these two motors that they coincide with, it gets a lot hotter because they do a lot faster movements and they change pace a lot and that causes overheating. So heat sinks are very important for those two step kicks in particular. It won't hurt to have them on the others, but uh, you need to at least have them on those two. Whether or not you do it now is irrelevant. Okay, something very important I need to stress here is that I am putting the board onto the frame in the right location, but I did not add 
the washers or the spacers that separate the board from the frame. And this is a big no-no. You definitely need a non-conductive something to go in between the board and the frame. Because your solder joints on the bottom of the board are going to touch that frame and it will short it out almost immediately. So what you're seeing me do here is technically correct minus I need something on the other end of those screws. And normally the parts list does co call for some Arduino washers is what they call them. And it's just a non-conductive washer that acts as a spacer. So this is the right space to put the board, but absolutely don't put it onto the frame without a spacer in between the board and the frame. I can't stress this enough. may have already put your mechanical end stop onto the Y motor mount uh, in a previous step. If you have, you can ignore this, but I'm adding mine to it now. So uh, you can see in the picture also that I have a red binder clip hanging off the bed. That is because when we added the spring mounts, it raised the height of the bed to the point where when you home in your, your Y axis bed or your heat bed, it's actually going to go over the top of the end stop, which defeats the purpose. So I put the binder clip there so that when you manually take the heat bed and move it towards the end stop, the binder clip is going to attach to that little piece of metal hanging off the end stop that actually registers that it's being hit and tells the heat bed to stop. So it's very important you have something in place right there that will actually connect with the metal on the end stop to push it into place to let it know that something is there hitting it. Now as for the end stop cables that we need when we go to wire this thing up, um, you can see these pictures that I had to personally go in and color code them and cut out the extra wire just so I could decipher where the pins need to go. So you may not have needed to do that. Uh, yours might have already come with only three wires in the correct colors, but mine didn't. So you can see the kind of scheme that I pulled right there. And then you can see where I plugged them in onto the board in the correct position in order to get those wired up.
Next, we are going to get our heat bed wired up. And right now we have the two original wires that we soldered into position one and two on the heat bed. And we are going to take our positive and our negative, which I told you to remember back in the heat bed wiring video. And we need to get them plugged into the correct spots in the D8 terminal on the bottom of the ramps board. I'm gonna take my screwdriver and I'm gonna loosen up the screw terminal so that it will allow me to fit the copper into the terminal. And remember my white cable or wire was positive and my black was negative. And you can see the positive and negative signs on your board. Just make sure that you get them nice and secure into the terminal with absolutely no copper showing. And that's where the first wires go for the heat bed. Now once we get these tightened, uh, the next step for the heat bed wiring is going to be the thermistor. And that's where the connectors come into play because as you can see where I'm about to put them, they go on top of pins. That was the whole point. So for the heat bed thermistor, it's going to go in position T1, which is in between T0 and, T and T2. And it doesn't matter which connector goes to which pin. Just make sure that you're occupying the two pins that represent T1 for the heat bed thermistor. So now we have three things we need to wire up in relation to the hot end. And that includes the thermistor, the heater cartridge, and the fan that goes onto the extruder fan. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the heater cartridge, which is just a resistor, and I'm going to go to the D10 terminal, which is one space over from where we wired up the heat bed just now. And in this case, it doesn't matter which one's positive and which one's negative. Uh, just go ahead and cut back to where you have some copper showing and go ahead and get those wired into the D10 terminal. Right now, we don't need anything in the D9 terminal. In fact, we don't end up putting anything there. So it doesn't matter which direction, just get those two wired in. This is my second mistake in this video is that as you'll see I just plugged the heat in thermistor into position T2. Don't do that. Plug it into T0 which goes underneath the previous thermistor we just wired in. Nothing needs to go in T2. Just put it into T0. So notice that mistake. Um, and then what I just did there was I plugged in the fan uh, right underneath the X step kick. Now wiring up the motors is pretty straightforward. I actually have two different color schemes because I have two different brands of motors that use two different uh, wire coloring schemes. That doesn't matter. Um, just make sure that your blue wire goes on top. No matter what your color scheme is, your blue wire is gonna be facing upward when you go to plug these in. And as you can see, I'm plugging in the motor connectors to the left side of the step kicks. So your two Z motors are gonna plug into the two spots to the left of the Z step kick because there's two motors. The rest of them will only have one position or one set of pins to plug a motor into because they only need one motor. So make sure you keep the correct motors into the right step kick pins and make sure that your blue wire is on top.
So now that we have everything powered into the ramps board, or wired into the ramps board, we actually need to supply power to the ramps board, uh, which in return will power the entire printer. Now I'm going to take two sets of wires, which will be two positives and two negatives, as you can see, and I'm going to run them into the green screw terminals on the ramps board. One of them represents 11 amps, and the other represents 5 amps. Now you can see how the positive and negative line up, so make sure they stay consistent from the power supply into the green terminal, and make sure you screw them down tightly and securely. And last but not least, we're going to take our second fan, chop off the connector, and we're going to run the red and the black wire into the remaining positive and negative open terminals on our power supply, as shown in the photo. So this fan is going to blow cool air onto our ramps board once we start printing, and that is going to be a massive help to prevent things like missteps and thermal shutdown and things like that.